Greetings YouTube users. In today's tutorial, I'll do my very best to explain how to capture the sounds in this Roland TD50X brain module. As you know, you can shift through here and select a variety of drum kits. But recording those drum kits that are built in to a DAW program might seem a bit of a task uh, or a challenge for you to do. In some cases, you could actually buy a VST, but in this case, Roland doesn't have a VST, so all of those sounds are somewhat locked up in this brain module. So I'm going to go ahead and illustrate how to capture all of these individual drum pads, or whatever kit you have. You may have a different set of drum pads, but if you're using the TD50X, uh, you'll be able to successfully record what's in it onto your DAW program. Now in my case, I'm using Studio One. I will go through the setup here in just a minute. Let me just point out some of the cabling first. On the side of my computer, in this case a laptop, I have this, uh, it's a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack. And that's typically what I plug into the output port of the laptop. And that is feeding into this area here on the bottom of the Roland. It's called Mix In. And the reason for that output is so I can play along the music. You can control the volume for that if you don't already know in this Mix In knob setting. So as you're playing music out from your computer, you can feed it into the Roland and control that sound from this volume knob here. The second cable I wish to point out is the USB cable. So this USB cable uh, I have running out from the side of my laptop and that of course must go in to this side of the uh, Roland TD50X. This is where you're going to get all of your channels into your DAW program. Okay so now that we have that uh, stated, uh, my goal today is to show you how to choose any drum kit you want um, from the jog dial and record that into your DAW program. Again, in this case, it's going to be Studio One. By the way, all of these uh, volume levers will work in your mix when you're recording each of your drum pads. Okay, so once you've opened up Studio One, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a template that I already have in place. So I'm not going to really modify it, but I will provide examples along the way. This is in no specific order, so you can probably review this tutorial and do the order that best suits you. So let's go ahead and click uh, New Song. Once that opens, let's give it a name up at the top. I'm going to call it Test 1. My default parameters are these sample rates, 24-bit, 96. Of course, you can choose whichever you like. Okay, so you've got your blank template. The next thing you might want to do is go to the song, uh, song menu that is, click Song Setup. And under the Audio I.O. Setup area, this is ideally in the end what you want it to look like. Now, when you've got that USB uh, cable connected, these will automatically fall into place across the top. You're not going to be modifying any of these labels. They are, as such, coming directly off the Roland TD50X. But what you are going to do is add additional tracks, like I have on the left here, and you can choose mono, stereo, or simply add and make your selection at that point give it a description and then you're going to let's say once you've added kick drum you're going to go ahead and look for the kick column and tag it so let me provide you an example but then I'll uh, I'll remove my example so again when you're on the screen you're not going to see any of this stuff here that I have but that's going to be your goal by the way let me scroll down also so you can see how I have everything laid out now, currently, I only have one auxiliary input to the TD50X, and that's a splash symbol, and that's the last one on the bottom on input number 13. 
Okay, moving forward with my example. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click the Add button. It does give you a few more options. And when I choose the Add button, it's asking me for a label for the channel. So I'll just call this one Aux R. There is a, uh, an option for that. I'm going to leave it mono, but this is where you would choose whether you want to have a stereo track for your instrument pad, as an example, the snare drum or the tom or the ride cymbal. And if you change this section here to one, it's going to add multiple aux R's onto the left column. So unless you have, let's say, multiple auxiliaries that you're going to be mapping in, you might want to leave this as one. Again, otherwise you'll get double or triplicate or whatever number you put here. The channel color, you can go ahead and pick whatever you like. I'll just pick this blue one here and click OK. So you can say I've uh, added that channel and that's again how you're going to do the rest of these. So I've created this new channel called OXR and ironically it fell into place right here. But I could change it to whatever channel I want. I can say, whoops, I changed my mind. I want this to be for the hi-hat, or I want this to be for the tom, or whichever it might be. But whatever you choose, I'll put that back where it was since it's not currently assigned. Click Apply. That will actually make it live and accessible when you go back to your uh, song slash track screen. The last thing I want to show you here is the output. Of course, make sure your input is the TD50X. Your output would want to be the TD50X as well. Okay, so now that you have an idea as to what this should look like, I'll scroll slowly so you can see how my mapping is done. All of the instrument pads I have set to mono, except for my snare. I prefer to have um, two tracks for that for greater control. Okay, once I click OK, we'll be able to go back to the song screen and we will see where I have added the auxiliary. Let's click OK. So we're going to uh, show that auxiliary here in just a minute. So now that you're back to your blank screen, you've set up the inputs and the channels, you're going to begin to add things or tracks and instruments on the screen. Sorry, I didn't mean to say things. I meant to say your VAD 706 and each of the instrument pads. So click the plus sign and on the first one call it VAD 706. This is not going to be an audio track. This is where the MIDI is going to be recorded. So choose instrument. You can leave it on auto color if you want. The input is going to be set to none, and this would be a new instrument, and simply click OK. So you've added an instrument track without any other instrument output options on there. Leave that to none, because this is going to be your MIDI track uh, from the VAD 706 while you're playing the actual kit itself. OK, let's go ahead and add in that uh, auxiliary track that I just added uh, for the inputs on the previous screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Audio Track. If you recall, I did select Mono. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to give it the same matching name, Auxiliary, and then R, or something close would be fine, just so you can associate the two together. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and choose that, and it's right here. Okay, so that's been assigned. Again, if you want to double check that, you can simply go to the previous screen, hit Song just to check, Song Setup, and if you scroll down, you can see there it is, Aux R. So I've set this input, given it a label, given it the channel, made it active, and now I have it all set up on the first screen right here. Okay, at this point, 
let's go ahead and add a track by where I've already got an instrument pad connected to the TD50X. So I'm going to go ahead and add the snare drum in here and then I'll show you how that's activated. So if I right click, now if you remember I mentioned previously the snare is uh, the only uh, instrument pad that I have set up a stereo so I'm going to keep that uniform. So I've added a stereo track and at this point I'm going to type in snare hit enter and then I'm going to choose the input by which the snare drum will be feeding into Studio One. So from my list of inputs of course I had labeled them previously this makes it a breeze. If you haven't done that, again, these will all be listed as just simply input and it might be confusing. So you can see that I've labeled everything uh, succinctly to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and choose snare. Okay, so the description in my track is snare. The input channel uh, is snare. Everything is aligned to snare. I've even put, as you recall previously in the song, uh, input output stereo as a reminder to myself. I could put that in here. There we go. It takes a little bit of finesse. Okay, that's all done. So now I've got everything lined up. When I tap the snare drum, we should see activity. I must arm the snare first and let's see what happens. So to my right, you can't see it on this screen, but I've got the snare drum set up into the TD50X, which is now feeding into Studio One. Yep, that worked out just great. Let me do one more for you. So uh, that way you have a little more defined example. So let's go ahead and connect the first tom that was labeled as Tom 1. So I'm going to go ahead and add another track. You can just tap the letter T if you want. Let's give it a name, Tom 1. And this is going to be an audio track. And this would be mono. I'm not going to pick a preset again. The input I'm going to choose is Tom 1. The output will be, of course, to the main, which was the TD50X. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and arm the track. So when I tap the tom, the rack tom, number one, we should see activity here as well. And there you go. Now you saw a little bit of bleed into the snare. That's just the way the kit is set up. You could really tweak out the bleeding if you want. Um, so that provides, uh, I think, a pretty good insight as to how you want to set up each of your um, tracks individually and align them with each of your instrument pads. And so that way you have complete and total control of each of your instrument pads versus only the whole kit. And this should also allow you to choose any sound you want in the TD50X. At this point, I'm going to show you what my final example looks like and what it might look like on your end. Okay, so here I am. I am uh, working within um, a song that I'm working on. And since I'll be using this setup repeatedly, I have uh, actually made this my default. So whenever I open up a new song, or an empty song, I will actually be able to make this my default. Since this is the only MIDI kit I have on this particular computer, that works out real nice. Again, all of this was shown on a previous screen. I'm just re-showing you this again. So let's close out of here and show you what it looks like uh, with my final setup and this setup being the default. On the left, you can see how I have everything colorized and everything matches as with the previous screen. So in this example I have this uh, snare set up a stereo, the kick drum is mono, tom 1, tom 2, etc. In addition to that these are AIFF files from a song I've been working on 
which I brought into this song as well. So my goal here is these are all uh, keyboard tracks, bass, uh, things of that nature, strings. Uh, my goal here is to now lay down a set of drum tracks over my original song. Anyway, I hope that's uh, actually helped you. Uh, one other tip that you might uh, want to do is if you wish to play your drums over, let's say, a song, you would want to create a track for that and bring in the MP3 uh, file. And uh, you can then play along to some music. Let's say some of your favorite bands or whichever. Just add a track in here. And um, you're all set. Well, I hope this has really helped you uh, and that you found this tutorial of assistance. Um, and if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm still somewhat of a novice at this, uh, but I'll do what I can to help you out. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day.